Hey, good morning. This is Steve from the Whirly Bogger. Today is April 5th, 2022. Once again, I'm standing on the banks of the Yakima River down here at Reinhardt Park at the boat launch. And as you can see, the Yakima is mighty big this morning. We had lots of rain over the last 36 hours, uh, even snow at uh, higher elevations and around the foothills, the upper county especially, received a lot of moisture. And a couple of rainstorms that uh, that came through yesterday. So I'll explain, you know, why the river is operating at this level. So a lot of people think, oh, the reservoirs are full. Like, yes, they are filling. Right now, they're between 80 and 90 percent full. They'll fill the. They will fill the the reservoirs to capacity before they do any water releases. The only time that we really see water releases happen is when we, we have uh, fish mitigation happening. Uh, we see salmon pulses in the river and most likely being uh, the 4th of April, the way the river is operating now, most likely I would say we probably won't see many of those this year. This high water gives salmon the opportunity to uh, move throughout the river, you know, quickly move down river and out to the Pacific. So. Really, when we see those salmon pulses, that's what it's kind of all about, is we have low water. They dump a thousand cubic feet of water or more from the reservoir and try and push salmon through the system. So, most likely, we probably won't see that this year because of the higher volumes that we've had over the last five weeks. And this is probably going to continue. Again, high volumes aren't necessarily a major issue on the river here because we deal with high volumes of water on a year-round basis pretty much uh, if we're fishing from boats the only problem is is if you are not in a boat you can see that it will be extremely difficult to fish especially from the shoreline the speed of the current you're not actually gonna be able to step into the water in most places if you are, you know, the main thing is to look for corners, look for islands. Islands break up big main stem flow, push it to one side. So if you can access an island from the shallower side, you're able to access the river and find pretty decent fishing spots, you know, around the islands. So those are just kind of things that you learn as you go along the way. You know, squala fishing has everybody excited and, and of course, you know, I've said over the last few weeks we've we've had better squala fishing, but that's mainly due to, to river volumes. You know, with high river volumes, fish have a lot of places that they can go and a lot of other places that they can hold. So although squala fishing has been, you know, good, I mean definitely catching fish on squalas, dries. You know, nymphs, of course. So again, we'll continue to look at river volumes, look at flow charts. The river definitely fishable today from a boat kind of day by day, seeing what the weather, they are calling for more snow, 
snowing on the pass, Snoqualmie Pass today, yesterday. So just one of those springs, folks, that is cold and wet. We haven't had one of these in four or five years. You know, we've had a lot of lower river volumes and and uh, haven't had to contend with these these big river flows. So you can pretty much expect this probably most of the spring, most of the month of April. The one bad thing about it really is, you know, I've seen 80 degree days here on Easter Sunday. So and that's just right around the corner. So it was a 30 degree night last night. It's supposed to be in the 50s, mid 50s today. So hopefully it won't warm up quickly because that would uh, cause terrible flooding in the river. So I'll tell you about a couple of other alternative fisheries. Uh, lots of folks wondering about Rocky Ford. Lots of people wondering about lake fishing in the in the Columbia Basin unit. Uh, started to pick up there because you know air temperatures. Daytime temperatures have uh, increased quite a bit. Uh, wind, you know, in, in central Washington is definitely an issue. During the spring, make it tougher for uh, stillwater fishermen. Most of the lakes now are reporting pretty good fishing. There are a few um, that are have reported pretty slow fishing. And kind of the word going around is that uh, some of them might have summer killed last June and July. If you remember right, we had 100 degree temperatures in the first week of June last year. And it stayed hot all summer. So evidently a few of the lakes in the Columbia Desert Unit, Quincy, Burke, a few others didn't fare well during the summer but I believe those have all been replanted now uh, if you need more information you can call the uh, regional offices about that or you can check the stocking reports online and it'll, it'll give you detailed information about that So another reason why I decided to uh, do the river report today from the boat launch area here at Reinhardt Park is I've had a lot of calls, a lot of folks in the pro shop over the last couple of months talking about boat launch issues, losing access more and more on the river. Uh, especially at Bristol Flats now with the big Wallace development that's going on up there. Uh, the gate at Bristol Flats has been locked. I know there's several people are trying to uh, work out some type of agreement there. Uh, that access has been, you know, a viable boat launch access for over 30 years. It was put in by the Reclamation District to uh, control the flume there in the fall and uh, you know put out the buoys because there's been some drownings there in the past once they start running the flume during flip-flop the only way that we get anything done here is by contacting the local county commissioners here in Kittitas County and letting them letting them hear you know that you're not happy with river access and that you'd like to see more. I mean, this is a, uh, this boat launch here at uh, Reinhardt Park, pretty much unusable during high flows like this for either putting in or taking out, extremely difficult. We pay a lot of money to these state agencies you know, for fishing licenses, guide license, everything else that we pay for, and we should demand better representation. 
The only way politicians get anything done is when they hear from their constituents. So, if you're concerned about river access, want to see more river access, you have to get involved. You can't just bitch. You got to bitch and complain to the right people. So, call them, email them, tell them. You want more river access? Public access is absolutely crucial. You know, for controlling stress on the river, for, you know, conflicts, you know, between fishermen, between private landowners and fishermen. And it spreads the pressure out on the river, gives the fish a break. Having more access allows, allows people to spread out and not beat the river to a pulp. Nothing will get done until we hear more voices screaming about it. So, hope everybody has a good day. Let me know if you have any questions. Have a good week. First week of April.